Out credit affects your mortgage rate. Kelly, what's your rate? What are your mortgage rates today? Do you have the lowest rate? I want the lowest rate. Blah, 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 blah. I hear this all the time. Guess what? I've got a little secret. There is no best rate. There's only the best rate for you and your personal scenario. Your rate will differ from your neighbors, even if you're using the same lender. So today I'm gonna to share all of these juicy tips on how credit affects your mortgage rate. This will help to ensure that you are setting yourself up for success as you go through the home loan process. But before I do, please subscribe to this channel for all of your home finance tips that you're gonna to need to know. Okay, so let's get into it. First off, when you see specific mortgage rates advertised, it doesn't mean that that's actually going to be your interest rate. Why? Because when lenders advertise interest rates, first know that that interest rate is based on a point in time. So much like a camera, when you take a photo, boom, the market changes and that rate can be out of outdated within seconds, minutes, hours, or days. So really the context of knowing a mortgage rate that is getting quoted out in the universe or even by a lender, unless you're locking in the interest rate in that moment, it's just a rate based on some type of criteria. So let's walk through that. So if you're talking to a lender and you call and maybe you're under contract to buy a house and you have to close in three weeks and you, you're calling around to try to get insight on interest rates because you want the best rate. Trust me, you are doing a disservice to yourself without stopping and actually leaning into the conversation and making sure that the lender understands your particular scenario. Because if you just call a lender and say, hey, what's your rate? And they give you a rate, that doesn't mean that one, you're gonna get that rate, or two, that that's the best rate for what your goals are. Because the way that interest rates work is that there are going to be a variety of factors that drive the particular rate. So let's pause for a second and let's really kind of get some clarity around how home loan interest rates are set. Because I think people think that maybe the Federal Reserve sets rates. They don't. Nope, they don't. The mortgage-backed security market is what sets long-term home loan rates. Mortgage-backed securities, home loan rates. That's the connection. So think of mortgage-backed securities just like a stock, right? The market opens and you're gonna to start to see activity. So the mortgage-backed securities could be having a good day, they could be having a bad day, there could be news on the horizon that are gonna impact mortgage-backed securities and how they're traded and the price of them. All of that is what's gonna go into how home loan rates are set. So it's really important to know that the Federal Reserve doesn't set home loan rates. They don't set long-term mortgage rates. They have a function, they have a purpose. The Fed funds rate does a specific job, but home loan long-term rates are set by the mortgage-backed security market. So what goes into your home loan rate and how does credit affect your rate? There are a multiple variety of factors that are gonna drive this equation. Again, the end goal is the interest rate, but it's important to know everything that's kind of leading up to that end rate. So first and foremost, credit score is absolutely without a doubt going to impact your home loan interest rate. Why? Because your credit profile will give the lender a sense of the risk associated with lending you money. Hands down, end of the day, Home lending is a risk-based business. Much like car insurance, think of it this way. If you've had four accidents in a year, your car insurance is gonna be more expensive than if you're somebody that haven't, hasn't had any car accidents in a year. It's the same thing with regard to home lending. It's just a different business. So with home lending, the credit score is absolutely going to drive the interest rate, as will the home loan program itself. So remember, there are four types of home loans out there. We're gonna have VA, which is really for anybody that served in the military, the National Guard, or the Reserves. Number two, FHA, that is backed by HUD. Number three, USDA. And then four, which is a pretty big category, are gonna be 
going to be conventional home loans. That can include jumbo financing, that can include conventional conforming, Fannie and Freddie financing, but those are really the categories. An interest rate will be driven based on credit score differently for each one of those categories. On an FHA loan and a VA loan, the credit score itself isn't going to be as impactful to your end interest rate as it will be on a jumbo or a conventional home loan. Those programs, jumbo and conventional home loans, are very sensitive to actual credit score. So while FHA and VA have credit score minimums, they're still a lot more user friendly and there's a little more latitude in the score that's driving the actual end interest rate. So first thing, credit, big deal, that's going to be impactful with regard to your home loan interest rate. But there are a lot of other things that go into this. The second thing that to really kind of know is that what type of property are you purchasing? Is it a single family residence? Is it a condo? Is it a townhouse? Is it a manufactured home? All of that is going to impact your interest rate as well as the occupancy. Is this gonna be a primary residence? Is it a second home or a vacation home? Is it an investment property? Each one of those classifications will also drive your interest rate. Why is your interest rate different from your neighbors? Well, a point in time is going to really drive that equation, but also again, coming down to your personal particular scenario and what type of loan are you doing? Was it a home loan purchase? What it, was it a no cash out refinance? Is it a cash out refinance? The interest rate is going to differ based on loan program and each one of those types of loans. Interest rates on cash out refinances, for the most part, are higher than an interest rate on a no cash out refinance. Why? Because there's more risk associated from a lending perspective, right? So you have somebody that's tapping into their equity, the lender's gonna charge a little bit more because there's a higher risk to that type of home loan than somebody that's not taking any cash out. Now, is it material? No. And does it make sense to potentially do a cash out refinance? Yeah, sometimes it does. Sometimes it's incredible what it can do to somebody's overall picture. But that's really what a lot of this conversation today is about, is making sure that you have and are working with an experienced loan officer that is asking you the right questions. And the right questions will drive the best rate for you. At the end of the day, the questions, your goals, drives the rate that works best for your particular scenario. Can you trust your online credit score? Well, it depends. I trust the type of entity that's giving you your credit score, yeah, that's gonna be your credit score for that particular type of credit score. So here's the secret. There are about 80 different algorithms that drive different scoring models. So I'm often asked, this is probably my number one question. Well, I went online or my credit card company gave me my credit score, but now it looks way different when you guys pull my credit. Why? Well, the why is because they're not the same type of credit algorithm. So for example, if a credit card company gives us our credit score, that's based on a cer certain type of credit scoring model. When you go buy a car and the car financer pulls your credit report, the model that produces credit scores for car financers is a whole different model, not like the credit score or the credit card company giving you your credit score. If you pay and monitor your credit scores through the agencies themselves or the, the credit bureaus themselves or one of the companies that actually help people kind of monitor where their credit scores are, different algorithm, not necessarily going to be what you're gonna see when you go through the home loan process. So we know credit scores are important especially when it comes to the home lending process. So here are a few tips that you can do to keep your credit score as high as it can be as you prepare to go through the home purchase or refinance process. First and foremost, pay bills on time. One 30 day late payment can absolutely have a major impact, not only on your credit score, but then the resulting interest rate. 
especially for people that have always had great credit. So let's say you're tracking along, you've never had any late payments, 30 days or more is what I'm talking about when I say late payments, but you've never had any. And you're just tracking along and then you go on vacation and something happens, you forget to pay that credit card for the department store. That one 30 day late payment for somebody that has had spectacular credit could impact your credit score by 50, 60, 70 points. Like it's a big deal. So use online pay, do whatever you have to do, get it in your calendar, especially if you think that you're going to be purchasing a home or refinancing a home at some point in the future. Now I get it, sometimes life happens and you just don't have the money to pay your bill, I totally get it. But a lot of what I see in my seat isn't that. A lot of it is just, they forgot, they were out of town, it's just like little stuff, right? So one 30 day late payment, big deal. So the good news is the further you get away from that 30 day late payment, let's say it was two years ago and you're now just ready to buy a house, it's not gonna have as big of an impact on your overall credit profile and score like it would if you were late last month. So that's another part of this algorithm. Most recent 30 day late payment from the point in time that you've actually had your credit pulled to go through the home lending process, the bigger the impact it's gonna have on your score. Okay, so here is a secret. Are you ready? Here's how to maximize your credit score. Keep your balances on your credit cards, if you have credit cards, at 30% or lower of the limit. That's it. That's the game. 30% or lower of the limit. No 30 day late payments, obviously. But when I see people that use their credit cards a lot, even if they pay them off monthly, and this is the key, if you're somebody that uses your credit card to get points and you max it out every month, the point in time that the home lending credit report is being pulled, if it happens to be when there's a high balance in relation to the limit, that can drop your credit score. I know, right? Even if you've had no 30 day late payments. So keeping your balances on your credit cards at 30% or lower of the limit is key. And then also knowing when the credit cards themselves report to the credit bureaus. So there's a whole process on just knowing. And you know what, the easiest way to know is call your credit card and ask them, when do you report to the credit bureaus? Because that's the point in time that the balance is the lowest, especially if you're somebody that pays off the credit card every month. If you've had a long standing relationship with a credit card company, and you close it, it could have a negative impact on your credit score. So a lot of people like to move balances around or they like to get new credit cards because they have lower you know, terms or better terms or more points or things like that. Just be cognizant of the fact that closing a very old, long established account could negatively impact your credit score. When it comes to the home lending process, you do not want to pay off any of your collection accounts without having your lender pull a home lending credit report and talking with your lender first. I talk to so many people who think they're doing the right thing. They have had some old stuff, it's out there, it's still weighing on their shoulders, and they want to get it cleared up and they think that that's the first step. That's not the first step. Not if you're going to buy a home and you need to use a home loan to purchase a home or if you're gonna be refinancing, stop let the lender pull the home lending credit report, and then we will be able to tell you it needs to pay off, be paid off or it doesn't need to be paid off. Because what people don't realize is if you pay off a collection account and that collection account is very, very old, the last report date of that collection account could be years ago. When you pay it off, it brings it current into the algorithm that drives the credit score. So now it's saying an old derogatory collection account is a current derogatory collection account, which again, now is going to impact your credit score. So stop, 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 stop. Don't pay off those collections until you talk with a lender if you are going to be going through the home lending process at any point in the next six to 12 months. So now you know how credit affects your mortgage rate and how to get the best rate for you and your personal scenario. If you have questions, please be sure to comment below. And if you got value out of this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.